What if I told you that most economic experts believe AI won't lead to significant economic growth? We've been hearing about the incredible possibilities of AI for years. But have you ever wondered what economists think right now? Are they predicting hyper-economic growth and widespread prosperity? Or are they anticipating mass layoffs and job displacements? Surprisingly, most experts outside of the AI labs themselves don't foresee rapid economic growth or a lightning-fast transformation of society. There's the perspective of the economist, but also that of the anthropologist, the sociologist. They all matter, but I think the more you stack different pluralistic perspectives, the harder it is to see that there's any simple lever you can push on, intelligence or not, that's going to give you breakaway economic growth. And if you are patient enough to watch till the end, we discuss why this creates a vacuum that the people who know about it and are willing to take advantage of it might achieve unbelievable wealth in no time. I know, on this channel, I cover transformational technologies and the core message is always the same. Change is coming and it's coming fast. But this video is here to share an alternative perspective. I think it's important that you know and understand both sides and shape your own worldview. So what you'd call prediction markets are not forecasting super rapid growth anytime soon. If you look at what experts on economic growth, right, we had Chad Jones here yesterday, uh, he's not predicting super rapid growth, though he thinks AI might well accelerate rates of growth. So the experts and the markets agree. Who, who am I to say different from the experts in the market? You're an expert. <laughs> yeah, so but I'm with the honest. other experts. Tyler Cohen is an American economist, columnist, blogger, and a professor at George Mason University. But more importantly, he is an independent thinker with a profound understanding of what drives growth. In fact, he co-wrote the influential article, We Need a New Science of Progress in the Atlantic, which coined the term progress studies and sparked an entire movement. Your first thought might be that they are just economists or investors, not as technical, and they don't fully grasp how powerful these tools are. But Tyler doesn't downplay AI's capabilities. In fact, he is quite aggressive in his predictions about when AI will reach and surpass human-level intelligence. And uh, the last book I wrote, you know, it's called Goat, Who's the Greatest Economist of All Time. I'm happy if humans read it, but mostly I wrote it for the AIs. I wanted them to know I, like, appreciate them. And my next book, I'm writing even more for the AIs. Again, human readers are welcome. Uh, it will be free. But sort of, oh, who reviews it? Like, oh, is TLS going to pick it up? Or, like, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, like, the AIs w w will trawl it and know I've done this. And that will shape how they see me. And I hope a very salient and important way. And as far as I can tell, no one else is doing this. No one is, like, writing or recording for the AIs very much. But if you believe even in like a modest version of this progress, like I'm modest in what I believe relative to you and many of you, like you should be doing this. You're an idiot if you're not writing for the AIs. They're a big part of your audience and they're like purchasing power. We'll see, but over time it will accumulate and they're going to hold a lot of crypto. How does that make any sense? If you believe AGI is possible, why wouldn't it drive significant economic growth? Even more odd is that he and a lot of other economists don't predict rapid economic growth not just from AI, but from all the emergent technologies combined. Robotics, gene editing, crypto, fusion, fission, and solar energy. None of these, in their view, will lead to the kind of explosive growth you might expect. So what exactly is holding the economy back in their models? Why won't we have explosive economic growth 20% plus because of AI? It's very hard to get explosive economic growth for any reason, AI or not. One problem is that some parts of your economy grow very rapidly, and then you get a cost disease in the other parts of your economy that, for instance, can't use AI very well. Look at the U.S. economy. These numbers are guesses, but government consumption is, what, 18 percent? Healthcare is almost 20 percent. I'm guessing education is 6 to 7 percent. The nonprofit sector, uh, I'm not sure the number, but you add it all up, that's half of the economy right there. How well are they going to use AI? Is failure to use AI going to cause them to just immediately disappear and be replaced? No, that will take, say, 30 years. So you'll have some sectors of the economy, less regulated, where it happens very quickly, but that only gets you a modest booth in growth rates, not anything like, oh, the whole economy grows 40% a year, in a nutshell. The mechanism behind cost disease is that there's a limited amount of laborers, and if there's one high productivity sector, then wages everywhere have to go up, so your barber also has to earn twice the wages or something. With AI, you can just have every barbershop with 1,000 times the workers, every restaurant 1,000 times the workers, not just Google. So why would the cost disease mechanism still work here? Cost disease is more general than that. Let's say you have a bunch of factors of production. 
say five of them. Now all of a sudden we get a lot more intelligence, which has already been happening to be clear, right? Well, that just means the other constraints in your system become a lot more binding, that the marginal importance of those goes up and the marginal value of more and more IQ or intelligence goes down. So that also is self-limiting on growth and the cost disease, just one particular instantiation of that more general problem that we illustrate with talk about barbers and string quartets and the like. If you didn't know, this is the Darkish Patel podcast. It's amazing, you should check it out. Tarkish is an AI researcher himself and is highly optimistic about his future. So he keeps pressing Tyler on his view. And I'm going to show you highlights of Tyler explaining his view from multiple angles. Here's a simple way to put it. Most of sub-Saharan Africa still does not have reliable clean water. The intelligence required for that is not scarce. We cannot so readily do it. We are more in that position than we might like to think, but along other variables. And taking advantage of the intelligence from strong AI is one of those. So about a year ago, your uh, co-writer on Marshall Revolution, Alex Tabarrok, had a post about the extreme scarcity of high IQ workers. And so if the a labor force in the United States is 164 million people, if one in a thousand of them are geniuses, you know, you have 164,000 geniuses. That's why you have to, have to do semiconductors in Taiwan, because that's where they're putting their nominal amount of geniuses. We're putting ours in finance and tech. If you look at that framework, I mean, come on, we have a thousand times more of those kinds of people over the, and at the end of the day, the bottlenecks are going to eat all that away. Or if you ask any one of these people, if you had a thousand times more of your best colleague, your best coworker, your best co-founder, the bottleneck's going to eat all that away. Your organization isn't going to grow any faster. I didn't agree with that post. If you look at labor market data, <laughs> the returns to IQ as it translates into ages, they're amazingly low. They're, they're pretty insignificant. And people who are very successful... They're very smart, but they're people who have, say, eight or nine areas where they're like, on a scale of one to ten, they're a nine. Like, they have one area where they're just like an eleven and a half on a scale of one to ten. And then on everything else, they're an eight to a nine and have a lot of determination. And that's what leads to incredible success. And uh, IQ is one of those things, but it's not actually that important. It's the bundle, and the bundles are scarce, and then the bundles interacting with the rest of the world. Is he actually saying AGI will be worthless? No, his point is different. Just listen to this part. They'll be smart and they'll be conscientious. That I strongly believe. Look, I think they will boost the rate of economic growth by something like half a percentage point a year. Over 30, 40 years, that's an enormous difference. It will transform the entire world. But in any given year, we won't so much notice it. And a lot of it is something like a drug that might have taken 20 years. Now will come in 10 years. But at the end of it all, is still our system of clinical trials and regulation. And if everything that took 20 years takes 10 years, over time, that's an immense difference. But you don't quite feel it as so revolutionary for a long time. So the whole vibe of this progress studies thing is, look, we've got all these um, low-hanging fruits or medium-hanging fruits that if we fix our institutions, if we made these changes to regulations, to institutions, we could rapidly boost the rate of economic growth. And you're, okay, so we can fix the NIH and get increases in economic growth, but we have a billion extra people, 10 billion extra people, the smartest people, the most conscientious people, and that has an iota of difference of economic growth. Isn't there a contradiction between how much the rate of economic growth can increase between these two perspectives? There's diminishing marginal returns to most of these factors. So a simple one is how it interacts with regulation, law, and the government. Another huge one is energy usage. How good is our country in particular at expanding energy supply? I've seen a few encouraging signs lately with nuclear power, that's great. Most places won't do it. And even those reports, exactly how many years it will take, I know what the press releases say, we'll see, you know, it could be 10 years or more, and that will just be a smidgen of what we'll need to implement the kind of vision you're describing. So yeah, they're gonna be bottlenecks all along the way, the whole way, and uh, it's gonna be a tough slog, like the printing press, like electricity. The people who study diffusion of new technologies never think there will be rapid takeoff. So my view is kind of like I'm always siding with the experts. So economists, social scientists, most of them are blind and asleep to the promise of strong AI. They're just out to lunch. I think they're wrong. I trust the AI experts. But when you talk about, say, diffusion of new technologies, the people who do AI are basically totally wrong. The people who study that issue, I trust the experts. And if you put together the two views where in each area you trust the experts, then you get my view, which is amazing in the long run, will take a long time, tough slog, all these bottlenecks in the short run. And the fact that there's like a billion of your, you know, GPT whatevers, which I, I'm all in love with, I promise you, uh, it's going to take a while. This is a new perspective to hold in mind. 
It might be that these technologies are revolutionary, but their diffusion in society takes time. The vision Tyler describes create a massive opportunity for people who keep themselves up to date. Imagine this. When AGI arrives, some people won't even know about it. Others will fear it. Some will hope it just goes away. And others will feel too busy to act. Some will try but hit obstacles and give up. In the end, only a very small number of people will truly seize the opportunity and build incredible fortunes. To be honest, we are kind of in that phase right now. Even if AI progress has stopped right here, how many amazing things could be built with the current generation of AI that haven't been explored yet? The space of possibilities is endless. And whether it takes 20 years or just 5 for these technologies to fully diffuse into society, the key is that you can start using them before the whole society does. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. My name is Puria and I see you in the next one.